Thank you. <laughs> Good afternoon and welcome to Answers News for Monday, May 14th. I'm here with Ken Ham and Bodie Hodge and I'm Avery Foley mm -hmm. and it's great to have you joining with us today. Yep. We actually hey. have you back. That's you haven't right. been on in Day after a Mother's bit. Day, by you, the way. You're mm -hmm. just like Georgia. You forgot to welcome our studio audience. Oh, I'm sorry. And we have a wonderful live studio <laughs> audience. <laughs> Yep, I see a number of mothers out there. <laughs> all right, they're really excited we have, today. We have people from all over. There are people here from all across the United States and Bolivia. Mm -hmm. We have Bolivia represented. So okay. it takes a couple of minutes for the notifications to go out and people to start jumping online here. And uh, that's why we always spend the first couple of minutes talking about nothing. Pretty much. <laughs> is nothing something? <laughs> Depends, if, I guess, on how if, you're If nothing is a word it. and we're talking about nothing, is nothing something? Oh, okay, I can see people starting to jump on online well, is there here before nothing and what's that <laughs> is there anything before nothing is there anything before nothing hey we got an article about that today yeah i think we that's did. one of the articles yeah, yeah. well gonna, we, we might get to it we're going to talk about oh <laughs> num numbers are increasing already yeah, we like to like to see people sending emojis across the screen so if you're in the studio audience and you're following us on my facebook feel free to sp send uh, emojis right. across so the screen and we like people in canada this weekend right because I'm heading back to Canada. I think. Oh, this I am in Canada. You're yeah, in Canada. Yeah, I do weekend. go to Canada. You're speaking at Canada Christian College in Toronto. Yep. And somewhere in Scarborough, but I don't remember the name of the church. But it's on our website. So and you, and you know that because you're church. Canadian. I am. Yes. Avery, Avery yes. is Canadian, and she's our token millennial. <laughs> did you we know? Have that, to have one. Did you know the younger generation now before you are the Generation Z? Generation For Australians, Z. it's Generation yeah. Z. Hey, I'm with you on that one. Canadians are the same way. Generation Z. Z. Yeah. <laughs> so. Okay, so well, we see people jumping online here. Okay, so a couple of things I start off with until all the people get online here and people telling us where they're from. They're from all over again. Hey, somebody said here, if nothing is something, then there is a lot of evidence for evolution. I like that. <laughs> yeah, that, make, that makes sense. So at the beginning of the creation walk, which people who haven't here, been here before wouldn't even know, but this is all brand new, where we put the seven C's <laughs> of history <laughs> signs right there, and we opened that whole area up, and now there's a whole new entrance to the main walk through the museum. Awesome. That's after the first part of the museum, so yeah. that's all brand new. I'll have to do a walkthrough today and see the new update. Also, we're putting a link to a section on our website if people are interested in volunteering for the organization. We have volunteers that come from mm -hmm. all across America and other parts of the world mm -hmm. too. Yeah, my husband and came down from Canada and volunteered for a couple months. Well, there we, we are. It. And so on uh, Saturday night, we actually had a volunteer sort of gathering here. A lot of the volunteers came together and had a special program for them as a thank you and a special dinner for them as a thank you. Also, I want to mention to people that we do still have a lot of uh, job positions open, seasonal and permanent. There's a, a whole range of oh, them. Yeah. You, you can go to our website yeah. and see us. We'll have the link in there as well for people to go there. But uh, all sorts of specialist positions as well as seasonal uh, positions. That, that's how I got my job. Okay, I and I want, there. I want to show you ago. another picture. Yeah. This is going to be a famous picture because we have a, a, a couple of our supporters in Florida who tell me that uh, they watch Answers News, and as soon as they hear me speaking on Answers News, the cat jumps up and sits there the whole time and watches. <laughs> and if I'm not there speaking, the cat is looking around and wondering where I am. <laughs> so they think it's the Australian accent That's that hilarious. the cat likes, and he likes to watch it. So Hello, cat, cat in Florida. So, yeah, well, you, <laughs> you, you made a number of statements in the past about how cats are trying to take over you, the world. You, it's true. With Australia, and <laughs> I don't want this cat to know I can't stand cats. <laughs> I mean, they, yeah, they... I could just see the cat out there right now. What? Ken just said he doesn't like to come out of here. They're plotting. They are plotting to take over the world. They are. So, That's really funny. So, okay. So, Avery. All right. Are we ready to get started? You're leading we got, us today. We got lots go. of people on. People from all over. All right. This first one comes from Baptist Press. Hate group status blocks ADF from Amazon charity. So Amazon, everyone's familiar with Amazon, has a program called Amazon Smile where they donate money, you can choose where you want money to go from each of your purchases. So it's like 0.05% or something small, of each yeah. per, per, purchase that you make goes towards the charity you select. And ADF, the um, Alliance Defending Freedom, which is a religious liberty group that seeks to keep um, religious freedom in this nation, has been blocked from receiving funding through the Amazon Smile program um, because the Southern Poverty Law Center has labeled them a hate group and Amazon uses the, them um, to determine which groups 
go on the list and what and, things don't. And Southern Public Law Center have Liberty Council and mm -hmm. the American uh, Family Association. American Family, Family Association. They label as hate groups. D. James Kennedy Ministries. D. James Kennedy Ministries uh, labeled as hate groups. And yeah. really, it comes down to the fact that these groups believe marriage is a man and a yeah, woman. That's, that's all what, it comes down to. That's one of the main reasons. You yeah. know, Alliance Defending Freedom is a group of Christian attorneys uh, that help defend First Amendment cases mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. they are also uh, defending yeah. that, uh, they are also involved in that Baker case from uh, Colorado, mm -hmm. the Colorado Jack Christian Phillips. Baker, Jack Most Phillips, um, who wanted, wants to have the right to refuse to bake wedding cakes for same-sex ceremonies because mm -hmm. of his Christian convictions. And so that's come, that, in fact, there'll be a ruling from the Supreme Court on that uh, yeah. probably this summer Ho hopefully soon. Uh, in, in, in regard to those that it's, uh, it's interesting. particular issue. Amazon Smile claims their recipients must be in good standing with the IRS and cannot engage in support, encourage, or promote intolerance, hate, terrorism, violence, money laundering, or other illegal activities. It's interesting they have intolerance in there because Amazon Smile is being intolerant of those who hold to a biblical view of marriage. They're doing exactly what they claim. Right. They don't want other people. They don't want to support yeah, other people. They're intolerant of the Christian position because mm -hmm. these days, if you hold to the biblical position of marriage, one man and one woman, which which marriage is a god ordained institution mm -hmm. anyway. I mean, when when, when the gay community talk about same-sex marriage, they shouldn't even use the word right. marriage mm -hmm. because yeah. marriage comes from the Bible. It does. Um, but God's defined it. But it, it's, yeah. a, it's a God-ordained institution. But if you mm -hmm. hold to that position, you're considered that you have mm -hmm. hate speech. And it's interesting what the Southern Poverty Law yeah. Center said here. ADF regularly defames LGB people, and they said they're comparable to the Ku Klux Klan, the neo-Nazi movement, the non-Confederates, racist skinheads, black separatists, anti-government militias. Just because yeah, they believe marriage is for a man and woman, and they defend that. Christians. What's in, yeah, what? but, you know, if you hop on Amazon, you can actually buy things like Nazi paraphernalia and different things, you know, through their marketplace. There's a number of racist organizations that are openly racist, so you can buy some of their, inf their, their stuff. So you can buy their stuff on Amazon. Yeah. But Southern Public Law Center claims mm -hmm. that ADF is comparable yeah. to them, which is not true at all. Yeah. No. And no. so really, they're listed, as, so so they're listed as a hate, hate group. group. So you, just, therefore, yeah. they can't participate in the Amazon Smile program. Well, who, who judges if the SPLC is a hate group or it, not? Exactly. Yeah. Like they. You know, I mean, that's an interesting question. We right should there. start up a group that judges those people Maybe as we hate groups. Put, a, put together a list out there. Yeah. And, you know, it's yeah. interesting. The Alliance yeah. Defending Freedom actually helped us recently in that Dr. Andrew Snelling. Mm -hmm. uh, was trying to get a permit to do research in the Grand right, Canyon yeah. and they kept knocking yep. him back for three years. He's the head of our research department as a PhD very, in geology yeah, from geologist. Sydney University. Right. He's done research there before but kept knocking him back for three years. So we because got, of his religious belief. Well, mm -hmm. we got yeah. Yeah. Alliance Defending Freedom careful. involved and they found out that uh, professors had said, don't let him do the research. He's a creationist. He's a mm -hmm. Christian. And so it was discrimination. And so they, uh, yeah. on behalf of our geologists, sued uh, the federal government sued the Grand Canyon National Parks Department and when it got to the federal government they quickly caved because they recognized that it was a blatant case of discrimination. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah it was and basically like they're, we'll let all sorts of people do research here except for you Christians. Except, yeah, right. If you come That's with really what happened. So, so then they had to allow Andrew to go do the research which he's done and he's getting the results in right now. But that's the sort of thing ADF does. They protect our freedoms, our First Amendment rights. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And because of that they're considered a hate group. Yeah. So there you are. Yeah. yeah. All right. This next one uh, is one that somebody sent in to us. We thought oh, we'd comment on. Before you go to oh, the next sorry. one, somebody asked here, where is Dr. Purdom? Simple answer. She is not here. She okay. Is not so here. <laughs> you're stuck with me instead. <laughs> All right. We're good to move on to the next one. Oh, there's one? people claiming the cat likes me. Of well, no. <laughs> someone it's, said you were a cat whisperer. <laughs> that, that, they're, uh, they're just, um, oh, that I, Okay, Ted and Karen are the ones with the cat, and they said his name is Chi, C-H-I-I. Is that a cat name? I don't have a cat. Sure, so. of course it's a cat name. Cat has the name. <laughs> Makes it a cat name. <laughs> they call the cat Chi? I've never heard a cat called Chi. Now you have. Yeah. It could be Chai. Oh, Chai. Is it Chai? chai? I don't know. <laughs> Not my cat. <laughs> Can we move on to the next article now? <laughs> okay. I just, We're I not can't liking believe, cats. I can't We're really obsessed with this cat. cat <laughs> I just can't believe a cat watches. <laughs> Did you all see that? Look, a cat actually watches. Where is it? There it is. It watches Answers News. When it hears Answers News, well, it's it gonna gets, be a cat with a biblical worldview. That's great. <laughs> 
I can't believe it. Okay, let's go oh to the next one. Oh my goodness. One. Okay, let's move it's a, on. It's a creationist let's move cat. On. It's a creationist cat. <laughs> it doesn't believe in evolution. <laughs> Okay, this next one, like I said, someone sent this into us. We thought we'd comment on it. it comes from the Friendly Atheist blog. And he blogs. Uh, he's not a friendly atheist. No, especially not to us. <laughs> um, um, <I laughs> Maybe mean, to others, he, not to he us. He attacks people personally <laughs> and he uses all sorts of uh, swear words and things like mm -hmm. that. But anyway, yeah, yeah go on. Not, not very kind in his writing. Um, he says, researchers find link between religious fundamentalism and falling for fake news. So he's commenting on a working paper by researchers at Yale um, that found that, the, that, I'm quoting from his blog, finds that the kind of people more likely to believe stories that are literally fake news, who fall for hoaxes, if you will, are those who believe in delusions, are dogmatic in their thinking, and are just flat out religious fundamentalists. And then he goes on to basically define that as people who believe in biblical creation and believe in the Bible and believe that Young God exists. That God exists. Okay, okay, that. hold on. So, so we would be in that category, and yet yes. we pulled up his news item. Do you realize that? <laughs> That's a good point. Does that mean that he's fake news? Must By be. By his standard, he would be fake news since yeah. we just pulled it up. Well, he is fake news anyway. <laughs> well, and, what I thought was interesting is he, he's, he really focuses on the religious fundamentalist part of this and the, the closed-minded idea. But in 2017, we commented on this study before, there was a study that came out that found what, what they call the non-religious. Obviously, there aren't really any non-religious people. Everyone has religious beliefs, right. but they call it. Non-religious can be more closed-minded than they're religious. So this study found that people, particularly atheists, are even more closed-minded towards the beliefs of others than but, so called but religious not, people are. Not so non -religious. he falls into this category as they're non religious. They're not non religious. There's no, such, no such person exactly. as non religious. Yeah, yeah. No one's right. really religious. Atheism is a religion. So if, that study completely if, if, puts him in the group of the people he's talking about. Yeah. So. If he was it's, not religious, he wouldn't be talking about religious topics all the time. It's interesting, too, how he says uh, all those who believe in delusions are dogmatic. You know, he's very dogmatic in this article. Very dogmatic. In fact, he's dogmatic that those who believe in Genesis, it's, he says it three times the lies, the lies, the lies. And then he goes, I can't. Well, he even I can't read you in here. Ken. The other two words I'm not allowed to read yeah. uh, on air because you wouldn't. Re now, I would never say them anyway. Uh, so <laughs> he uh, says here, just look at creationist Ken Ham. His organization literally believes the answers are in Genesis that God created do. everything in name. six days, a few, a few thousand, thousand years, years ago. ago. Hey, that bit's not fake news. That bit's correct. That, <laughs> it is. Got it, it is indeed. Right. He got he got it right. He goes on to say <laughs> down here, I think it's much harder to change someone's thought processes the older they get. Is he willing to change his thought processes? Yeah, Probably he says, not. he says all hmm. for these Christians like Ken Ham, all evidence must be shoved into that idea that God created. You know, he's an atheist. He's already rejected evidence. Everything he rejected the Bible, which is evidence. Worldview. Like, yeah. it goes both ways. Like, what he's saying isn't yeah. just the creation of And because he believes everything happened by natural processes, he thinks everything has to be fitted yeah, exactly. into that view. It's, it, yeah. it comes back to that issue of it's a worldview and it's an interpretation right. issue. He's interpreting the evidence through his worldview. We're interpreting the evidence through our worldview. And the battle is at the worldview level, That's not right. at the evidence level. That's right. We're actually looking at the same evidence. Exactly. We're looking at the same instances of natural selection mm -hmm. or the same DNA or same dinosaur rock bones layers. or Grand Canyon, whatever it yeah. might be. I mean, we're looking at the same evidence. The difference is the interpretation. We mm -hmm. are, are open about starting with it, God and his word to look at any piece of evidence. Do you know what's interesting? Uh, he's one of these atheist bloggers, and I very rarely go to his side. A lot of it, mm -hmm. there's pornography and blasphemy, but 90% yeah. of the time, he attacks Christians mm -hmm. or Christianity. And, and what he says about us is so twisted and so just outright untrues. Hey, wait a minute. He uses the word lies. Oh, well, you know, that's awful Christian of him because it's the Bible that says not to lie. In an yeah. atheistic worldview, why not? Do you yeah, realize he, he's borrowing from Christian morality to try to argue against He's borrowing from Christian morality, and then he says, people who, yeah, pe hmm. people who believe Very Christian of him. fake news are likely to be religious people. So, yeah, yeah, but we don't believe his fake news, though. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> All right. Sorry, All let's right. go to the next one. This next one comes from Scientific American. Island lizards shift to evolutionary fast track after invasive goats and rats are eradicated. Really? They went to a fast track? <laughs> what, what happened? What well, did they change into? Listen to the story. Tell, tell it's, me what they it's very into. disturbing. Listen to the story. So 
um, on this island in the Caribbean, this uh, called Redonda, Redonda, I think is how you pronounce it. There was basically goats and rats were introduced to the island. They're not native to the island, and they basically destroyed the island. They ate all the vegetation, and they the rats actually started eating the, the lizards that are native to this particular island. And so finally, researchers went in and got all the goats and took them off the island, put them on a different island. I um, don't know what's going to happen to that <laughs> island, but okay. And then they killed all the rats. And so in just a year, the lizard, the, the whole island has just started to flourish, and there's been some huge changes in the lizards. Okay. Their legs are a little bit they longer. Into? Their legs are a little bit longer. Their legs are a little bit longer. Yep. Wow, this is great. You know, you know what? They Clearly say that this fast is fast track evolution. They say this is possibly a great example of rapid evolution. That's not evolution. No, the information that's, is already there. It's their legs are evolving. Selection is all that their it legs, is. That's their that's legs it. are evolving. <laughs> they're evolving into legs, but they're little longer legs. Is that because they can eat more? Because it, yeah, because now that the goats are gone, there's more vegetation, now. so there's more insects. Therefore, the lizards are able Better to nutrition. eat more and reproduce more. And then having longer legs gives them certain survival advantages. Mm -hmm. So it, what's really cool is how fast this is happening. Like, you wouldn't expect to see these changes even well, in a year. Well, that probably surprised you. Um, so it's surprising uh, the evolutionists yeah. because they don't expect things to happen this fast. Because right. in an evolutionary worldview, it's millions of years, right? So yeah, things don't think, happen think fast. In a biblical periods. worldview, God has equipped his creation to... Survive wow. and thrive in an ever-changing world. There's just variations world, so. within the kind. There's just variation within a kind. It's just not, yeah, natural selection and, and working on information. And it's nothing information to do with evolution. But over and over again, the evolutionists mm -hmm. always use changes you see within a kind as examples mm -hmm. of evolution. I mean, it just shows you. It's yeah. hard to believe that, that people actually, intelligent yeah. people, get sucked into such a mm -hmm. fairy tale yeah. of believing that little changes you see within a kind is actually evidence that one kind changes into a different kind. Yeah. It's ridiculous. It's a bait and switch. They're saying, hey, mm -hmm. look at this little change over here. Therefore, this big change over here happened. Yeah, that's exactly. A jump. That's a yeah. leap in They're talking logic. about two totally different things, yeah. but they're calling it evolution, even though it isn't. Well, it isn't molecules to man evolution. Yeah. You know, the next, the next uh, article here is about the evolving idea of evolution. <laughs> this one comes from New Scientist. A fossil may rewrite the story of how plants first lived on land. So evolution's getting another rewrite. Hey, uh, hey Ken, I have a question for you in light of that. Are, are plants alive in a biblical sense? Are plants alive in a biblical sense? No, they're not because uh, if you, th there's a Hebrew word nepesh mm -hmm. that's used for animals, it's used for man, it's used for land animals, but it's not used for plants. So plants don't, aren't alive in a biblical sense, they don't die they're in a biblical sense. Like the that. life of the flesh is in the blood. And the, and so, so they're more like self-replicating biological machines for the purpose of food. Yeah, yeah. That's pretty fascinating. Well, a cat is really nothing more than a, <laughs> a cat is nothing more than a computer program if you think about it. But it, Georgia needs to come back. But it, so I you, just can't. But it's, like <laughs> but, but, it, but it's different because because it, it it's it's an animal has nephesh even though it's even though it's like a little yeah. machine. Well, what about catfish? It's you all like programmed. Catfish? What's that? Like okay, can I summarize the story so people know what we're talking about now? We're talking about catfish here. <laughs> we're supposed to be talking or about fossil plants. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Okay, back to the plant. Okay. So there was this fossil that's been in a museum drawer for about 100 years now. No one's really bothered to look at this fossil, and they pulled it out and started looking at it. And they believe that it is a fossil from one of the first plants. So in, in the evolutionary timeline, um, they have put this fossil at 432 million years ago. And basically, finding this fossil totally rewrites evolutionary history for plants because they believe mosses and things like that evolved first because they seem to be simpler than the other plants. But this fossil says, no, 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 it's the other way around. It's the other, like the trees and shrub type plants that evolved first and mosses came later. So one fossil. But here's, here's one fossil. It's changing everything. One fossil, now they say got to change their whole view of the evolution mm. of plants. But you know, almost, I think almost every Answers news program, there's an article yes. about how evolutionists <laughs> Evolutionists have to rewrite this part of evolution or rethink this or now mm -hmm. this changes this or this changes this. You know what? Every, I agree with the time. fact they need to rethink. Mm -hmm. They need to rethink evolution. Mm -hmm. It's not true. You yeah. know what I think is interesting? They need to really, really rethink it. They say in here uh, that the first plants they, they believe emerged 515 million years ago. And yet this early plant that's changing everything that they ever knew about the evolution of plants apparently is only supposed to be 432 million years ago. That's awful close. That, that's like way off, number one. It's millions and millions of years away. And you know what they also say? They also say, we don't know what the first plants were now because yeah, the first ones they find in the fossil record, according to their dates, are so complex. They say, we don't know what the first that's ones right. were like. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Well, just, you know, plant, just, plants were made on day three. 
Yeah. So they, you know, they were around before animals, before man, flying or sea creatures. You know, that's all day five and day six creatures. Mm -hmm. They've been um, around since day three. Yes. Yeah, so, so they, they, yeah. they were just, around. Before it just shows man. that evolution is such an elastic model. It can be changed no matter what the evidence comes up as. They'll just change the story to, to fit with but, but whatever what they, they discover. Question. It's so elastic. It, they, they don't question the evolution though, and they don't question the dates. Why don't they? I mean, yeah. here they just changed their whole view of how this because was. Why, why don't they, they question evolution? Because they've already decided evolution's fact, mm -hmm. and they have to fit all the evidence into mm -hmm. their idea. And it's a false yeah. idea. So their yeah. world Again, view it comes back idea. to that. It's a world Be view Before issue. we go to the next one, uh, so, uh, somebody from South Africa is watching. Did you know that? All right. Cool. And someone here said, and yet on TV documentaries, they speak as if they know how yeah. evolution works. Yeah, they have no idea. And uh, they just, it's just a guess. But, okay. So somebody said here, if it wasn't for cats, the earth would be overflowing with rodents. <laughs> it also says here, all I can say is the lion of the tribe of Judah. Yeah, but, yeah, but lions are more like a real cat. Domestic it's also called a lamb. We're back on cats Do you realize the lamb of God. Domestic cats are the poodles of the cat world. <laughs> they are. They're sin-cursed, degenerate, mutated copies of the original cats. That's what they are. That's the definition of a cat. All right, so let me so, ask so you. So we've gotten through like four articles now, and we're like over halfway through. <laughs> somebody, uh, somebody asked where they got the 50, 515 million years from. They, they don't tell us which dating method they yeah, use. You, right, and, they and that's just the standard evolutionary timeline. That isn't based on this right. particular study. The uh, 432 just, is from yeah, the study. What, what they do is yeah, they, they look they, on the geologic time scale, and they say, well, yeah. this fossil was found at this level or this particular mm -hmm. rock layer. So they just yeah. go over on and say it's X millions of years old. That's how they do that. <laughs> Um, it's not based on radiometric dating or anything like that. Usually not, yeah. yeah. So I'll for the next one, before we go to the next one, let me ask our studio audience. Does anyone here know what rugby union is? Rugby league? <laughs> See, we, we have a big group of Americans here. The <laughs> yeah, there's no, obviously no Australians in the audience. <laughs> Does anyone know what football is? Oh, okay. <laughs> a few tentative hands, like, I think so, we're talking about the same thing. <laughs> it, football in Australia and New Zealand, there's rugby. Right. There's also Australian rules, but there's rugby. Right. And one of the main differences between Australian football and American football is that in American football, everybody is pre-bandaged. <laughs> <laughs> you think about it, they got all these pads and they got all these helmets, whereas it, in Australian football, they, they're just in t-shirts and shorts and they just get out you know, there. There's a, there's a lot tougher. Yeah, yeah, you're tougher. Yeah, there's yeah, a lot of tougher. American football teams that have cat names. Bengals, Panthers. Well, the only good sport is hockey, so. Okay, let, so let's talk about. But I'm Canadian, so I might be biased. <laughs> that actually, okay, can we go actually, it's interesting. One? It's it's a football team in New Zealand called the All Blacks. Do you realize in America they'd probably be sued and yeah, called, name, called yeah. ra racist or Pro something? Probably. Okay, so this one comes from the Cauldron Pool out of Australia. Um, all blacks to wear LGBTQ rainbow as they call for millions to fight against the Christian view of homosexuality. So They're uh, tolerant, aren't they? <laughs> all blacks, this uh, New Zealand rugby team, has a new jersey that when you stretch it, as you can see in the photo there, rainbow colors appear. And they're using this new hashtag, diversity is strength. And they have an ad that just came out. Um, and this is what they say in the ad. The next battle is different. The next enemy is truly formidable and deeply devious. It is discrimination, an enemy that cannot be fought alone. It must be defeated together. It will take more than 15. It will take thousands, millions. Diversity is strength. And of course, when they say Does, diversity... When they well, say diversity, does that include Christianity? No. Well, here's what we need Not to understand. The authority of God this is in response to the fact that in Australia, an Australian rugby player who's a Christian and mm -hmm. was asked a question... Uh, and and uh, was it on it was Instagram? Like on Instagram, Facebook, something like that. Someone those, asked and, him for his And he answered views with a Bible verse about about homosexuality. First Corinthians six, um, nine, ten through. And so when he answered uh, with that 11. Bible verse, um, it, it, he was then called, um, well, basically just all sorts a, of stuff. Really. All yeah, sorts of stuff. Bigoted, yeah. And it's interesting. Yeah. You know who's sponsoring this campaign for the All Blacks to wear their rainbow shirts as part of their diversity strength campaign and the ad uh, the ad's narrator calls for thousands even millions to help him fight the next battle against the formidable and deeply devious enemy that is discrimination as Avery read 
Well, the sponsor behind it is AIG Insurance. That's not Answers and Genesis. Not us. No. So that's why we wanted to clarify this, because it says in the article, the team sponsor, AIG Insurance. <laughs> that's Associated Insurance Group. Yeah, yeah, not us. We don't own any insurance. And companies. theirs has a, a capital A, capital I, capital G. Right. Ours is a capital A, little, little I, I. Right. Capital, capital G. G. So it's a yeah. different AIG. Yeah, so I mean, yeah, yeah their, their slogan here I'm, is diversity is strength, and they're, they're really doing what they can to oppose Christianity. They're, they're being very yeah. anti-Christian. They're discriminating, which is what they're saying they're fighting against, but they're discriminating against those who hold to a biblical worldview. At the end it's of this article standard. here, they said, what place is there for Christians on the All Blacks team? None, the, unless none. you want to be part of supporting that. Yeah, unless There's you want no to give room up your for Christianity. you. And they, um, so they, they're doing the exact opposite of what they They quote R.C. Sproul Jr. here, who said, Tolerance was never the goal. Approval is. We who give the former but not the latter will not be tolerated. That's very true. Mm -hmm. And that's really what's, yeah. what's mm -hmm. going on here. So mm -hmm. um, at the end of this particular article it says, what place is there for Christians on the All Blacks team? None. Not unless they're willing to play under the banner of something that fundamentally contradicts their faith. It, isn't it fascinating right. to see how much we see this, uh, this, this hate toward Christians? Uh, the, the homosexual yeah. agenda really being forced upon the culture. Mm -hmm. And you know, mm -hmm. people it's wonder why teams. has it become such a predominant part mm -hmm. of the culture. And in fact, the next article even even uh, invo is involved in this whole gender uh, issue that's being forced upon the culture. Um, and, and I believe it's Romans one, when you have people that rebel against God, as we're seeing happening in our culture then God turns them over to their depraved natures. And mm -hmm. then yeah. it's, it's, it illustrates, it, well, it actually says in Romans 1, that homosexual behavior is an outcome of that, where mm -hmm. people are turned That's over right. their depraved nature. It's, it's, a a sign, sign it's a sign that God is turning the culture over. I believe God is judging America. He's judging the whole Western world mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, for many reasons. They have, they have killed millions of babies, millions of children by abortion. In America, 60 million alone since Roe versus Wade. They threw God out of the public schools, mm -hmm. Bible out of the public schools, prayer out of the public schools. They yeah. teach against the Bible. Uh, and, and we've now got whole generations that are walking away from the church. And God, I believe, is judging our culture in the Western world. Yeah. Uh, so the next one that you mentioned comes from the Chronicle of Higher Education. What it means to be a woman is not static how women's colleges are handling transgender applicants. So of course, if you're an all women's college, this issue of, of transgender is, they're gonna have to wrestle through this in, in the 21st century. And we talked about this, this um, one of the schools they mentioned, Mount Holyoke, I think that's how you pronounce it. We mentioned that, we talked about that a couple answers news is ago, because they, the faculty there told, or the, rather the, like the head faculty told the other faculty to stop using the word woman at a woman's college because it's discriminatory and could be offensive. Um, so that's the kind of things that there's happening in this particular article. It's kind of like what's happening with article. the Boy Scouts. Well, in yeah. this article it says, Mount Holyoke, for example, now says students who self-identify as women can be considered for admission. And they said in a policy statement, we recognize that what it means to be a woman is not static. By the way, do all the women in this room realize that? <laughs> what it means to be a woman is not static. And it says traditional binaries, what's a traditional binary? So binary would be like binary is this idea that there's male, male and, and female. There's female. So the biblical view of objective. So traditional objective. binaries around who counts as a man or woman are being challenged by those whose gender identity does not conform to their biology. Oh, so biologically so you biologically are male or female. Are male and, female. and then it goes through a number of other colleges and, and what mm -hmm. they say Bunch here. Um, for instance, uh, it says there's a dozen women's colleges that developed admission policies for transgender students. Uh, and uh, it says, we want to, <laughs> one of these colleges here, it says, uh, we want to embrace all women. What they mean by all women is women who are women and women who are not women. They want to embrace all women. There's uh, this one school But they don't that, want to embrace the women that don't want to be women. Yeah, because there's this one school that says they'll, they'll accept transgender women and non-binary applicants, so people who identify as sort of neither male nor female, um, but they won't accept transgender men. So people who are biologically female but who identify as male are not allowed to come to the school, even though they're actually women. So if they're really women, they can't go to the school. If they don't right. identify as a woman. But they don't want to call it women at the school. This it's like, what's the point of even having a women's college if there's no such thing as male now, and female? Cedar, like, Cedar Crest College says they only accept that. Why not let squirrels in? C Cedar Crest College only, ex well, if you identify as a squirrel, 
What if you're a squirrel? I know a number of people no. might as what if identify there's a squ as squirrel food, though. But there might be a squirrel that identifies as a woman. It could be. You well, could have a pet squirrel and tell the college that. The cat might. The cat, yeah, the cat might. <laughs> it could. Uh, so Cedar Crest College says applicants, you can only be an applicant if you are assigned female at birth and or applicants who self-identify as a woman. So that's anyone. That's like, anyone. Literally anyone well, could say they claim to be, that yeah, they're a woman and yeah, but, yeah. be accepted into the college. You and know, then, d does this work elsewhere? Like, let's say somebody gets convicted of being a, a, a thief, right? And the judge is like, all right, well, you're going to go to prison. And then they say, now, hold on a second here. I don't ident identify as a robber. Well, they'd be like, oh, wow, you don't identify that. Way. Okay, you can go loose. Yeah. Yeah, like, I mean, if you can identify as anything you want. Why can't I identify as a senior and get senior discount? But what if they said... Like, <laughs> like really? Hey, now I'm at that stage where I have people <laughs> asking me, hey, are you over this age? I'm like, how old do I look? No one's asked me yet. I, I identify as a millennial. <laughs> I do. I'm a millennial so at heart. So if I could identify uh -huh. as, say, 17, do I have to pay taxes? Right, yeah, like, it's, it's complete nonsense, but... That's the so world let, let me read to you from the director, director of Diversity and Inclusion at Cedar Crest College. Okay, now listen to this. Um, gender is much more fluid and much more complex than the conversation 20 years ago. We're trying to develop a policy that is consistent with our mission and our diversity statement, understanding that if things continue to change or evolve, we'd evolve as well. <laughs> and then listen to this statement, which, okay... So this is from Mills College, Mills College. Now this, this is where you realize the world's gone nuts. If there is dichotomy, as in someone is born a female, identifies as male, and uses they or them pronouns, then that's not clear for us what that means. So we'd reach out to the students so they understand that this is a woman-centric education, and we'd see if they're comfortable with that. But what's a woman-centric education the if there's no male or female? Like, that's right. And they're stopped using the word woman. How would, how would they actually even communicate? Okay. Yeah, it, it doesn't, it doesn't so, make any sense. Okay, so how about this one? This is from another, from Smith College. Smith College, for genderqueer or non-binary students. Okay, what, what's genderqueer? Okay, so we looked this up before the episode to make sure we got it right. So genderqueer is someone who identifies as somewhere on the spectrum of, spectrum of male and female, but not as a male or a female. So like 37% male or something. And it, I believe it can change depending on the Okay, day. so what's non-binary? Non non-binary is where you, you don't identify as male or female, you identify typically as both male or female or something along those lines. The, the terms overlap and they're really confusing. So if you're non-binary, what are you? It depends on like, what you okay. feel that day. All right. to so for gender, this is, mm. this is Smith Good College. For gender or non-binary students, the policy website emphasized the college focus is dedicated to women's education. But the Dean of Admission notes that students who are admitted as female but later come to identify as male will be permitted to graduate as long as they fulfill the college standard requirements. That's different to the other one where if your mm -hmm. female identifies as male, you're not allowed to be there. Yeah. That's so discriminatory. According to, yeah, one place, yeah. yeah. Well, guys, we are, we out, are of out, out of this, time. Uh, but the world's gone nuts. It's gone nuts. As soon as you get away from the authority of God's word and you don't have that absolute standard anymore, I mean, anything goes. We're in a time See, just like Judges just 21, it. 25. Everyone mm -hmm. does what's right in their own eyes. And uh, it leads to cultural chaos. When you abandon the absolute authority of God's word, anything goes. That's where mm -hmm. our culture is going and yeah. heading. And I believe it's Romans 1. God is turning this culture mm -hmm. over to judgment. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we have a book here. Uh, Dr. Georgia Purdom is the general editor of the book. There's a number of scientists and experts involved in the book, but it is a different view of the Galapagos Islands. Now, we were talking about specifically about one island that uh, we Caribbean, saw changes yeah. Yeah, with regards with the to the rats and the, and the goats and the lizards. And, you know, the same sorts of things have occurred uh, on the Galapagos, which is a fascinating place. And Darwin tried to use that as arguments for evolution. Of course, a number of scientists and people uh, totally disagree with that interpretation. Uh, so Dr. Purdom was actually on a trip down there, and they got a chance to take a look at a lot of the same evidence, a different interpretation. Hey, it is yes. Just before Beautiful we end, book, by the way. somebody said, we're in trouble, this nation has flipped its lid. That's true. And then good news, the owners of the cat said chai or chi, whatever the pronunciation is, is traditional binary as a cat. Good to know. Good for that cat. That is good to know. 
good to end on that. I wonder if it's male note. or female traditional binary. Okay. Um, we're going to end on that note now. <laughs> so I hope you can join us again on Thursday at 2 p.m. for the next episode of Answers News. All right. God bless everyone.